One of my viewers had a good question on how they can create a dependent drop-down form field in their fillable form, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. This one is, is going to be an example of how you can ask a user a question, say question number one. Depending on what that user selects as the answer to question number one, then when they go to question number two, the options that they'll have to select from will be dependent on whatever they answered for the question number one. Again, it's called a dependent dropdown. I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, if we go to our form here, the example we're going to use is we are going to fill out the question number one is employee status. We're going to make it a dropdown form that the user can select either active or inactive. And then the next question, depending on whether that user selects active or inactive, they're going to have different options to select for question number two. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is go up to our developer tab. Remember, if you don't have the developer tab visible in your Microsoft Word, all you have to do is right click anywhere on the ribbon uh, at the top and select customize ribbon. Then this window will pop up and you'll see over here on the right hand side your main tabs. Make sure that the developer tab down here is checked and selected so that it will show up on one of your main tabs and then click OK. All right. There you have the developer tab and on the developer tab, you have the control section where you have form fields. Go over here to legacy tool form fields, the drop down there and select the drop down legacy tool, tool form field and insert it there. Then we're also going to insert the legacy tool form field drop down for the second option. What we need to do now is label these form fields. One question number one is kind of going to be the parent form field, meaning that whatever option is selected in that parent field is um, going to drive the options that are available in the child field, which is going to be question number two. So in order to label these as such, we have to bookmark them. So what we're going to do is on the first form field, we're going to double click. It'll open up the properties box. We're going to insert our drop down list options that the user will have to select from. So we're going to say active and hit add or inactive. And we're going to add that. Then down here under the field settings under bookmark, this is where we're going to label our form field. We're going to call it DD. And we're going to call it status. Label it something that you're going to remember that you know this is your parent uh, form field. Okay, so you're going to I'm labeling it DD status and click OK. Now the next form field, we're going to double click. Now we're not going to put any of the drop down options in that form field just yet. Um, we're actually just going to come down here and bookmark that and label it. And what we're going to label it is DD for drop down and we'll call it survey. That's part of the question and click OK. So now we've labeled these, we've bookmarked these form fields. The next thing you're going to do is come up here to Visual Basic. And uh, if you don't see this section of your ribbon, all you have to do is hit Control Alt uh, or Alt F11 or Alt Function F11, depending on your keyboard, and it will bring up the Visual Basic window. Once this is open, all you do is come up here to Insert Module, and we're going to insert a module here. Now here's where we're going to insert some Visual Basic code. You do not need to know anything special. I'm going to paste the code that you'll need right here in the description of the video below. So all you have to do is copy and paste that into a Word document, edit it in the, in the sections that I'm going to show you, and then paste it in here. I'm going to show you how easy that is. So the code that you're going to use is right here. And I want to show this to you so you'll see where you need to edit and modify based on your unique form. OK, so up here in the very top is where I have DD status, which is what we bookmark and labeled our first field for the first question, our parent field. We're going to put that there and we're also going to put it right here. And then the child form field or the form field that's going to be dependent on the other form field, your first form field is called DD survey. And that's where we put that right there. Then down here under the cases in the code, the first case is active. The second case is inactive. Those were the first two drop down choices that we selected for the parent field of DD status. OK, and so then what you have here are your answer options. If the user selects active, 
then the answer options for the DD survey field or child field are going to be either completed, in progress, or not started. However, if the answer they selected is inactive, then the only answer option they're going to get is do not engage, employee is inactive, or they could say ignore, employee is inactive. Okay. So all we have to do now is copy and paste here and then paste this right there into the Visual Basic module. And once that's in there, you don't need to do anything else. All you have to do is click Save and then return to your document. Now remember, whatever you label your parent and child form fields is what you're gonna replace in here and whatever your options are for your drop-down selections are what you're gonna add here for the cases. Okay, so now we're just gonna go back to our document. And the first thing we're gonna do is double click on the parent DD status form field and right here where it says exit, you're gonna select the dropdown and, collect, and select populate DD status, okay? That's there now because we included that Visual Basic module uh, that we inserted, that's what that's from. So what we're saying is upon a user filling that form in, selecting their answer and exiting out of that box, then um, it's going to run that and so when we restrict our form when they go to the second question the our correct answers are going to pop up and i'll show you how that works all right so now let's go to restrict our form we're going to restrict editing go to number two check the box and make sure that it's uh, restricted to filling in forms and then we are going to say yes start enforcing protection you don't need to put a password remember if you put a password just write it down so you know what it is i'm not going to put a password i'll just click ok all right so now our form is restricted to filling in forms so this is what your form is going to look like to a user and what you'll what they'll see is active or inactive so remember if they have selected active they're going to come down here and they're going to see the completed in progress or not started However, if they come up here and select inactive, then their answer option is only going to be what we put in there for the code, which was do not engage employee is inactive. So that is a way that you can use Visual Basic to insert your module so that you create a dependent drop down field. Thanks again for the great question. If you guys have any other questions or tips that may be useful, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and if you want to receive a notification when I post new videos, click the bell. Be sure to visit my website, SharonSmithHR.com. I really appreciate you all watching. Thanks.